Let's go. Grace, peace, and blessings be unto you, beloved. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, the real Jesus the Christ, son of the living Elohim of Yisrael. I am Apostle BBJ, and this is Fresh Manna with Pastor. The Word of God says this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I've read down the verse four. We're going to park right there. We're going to take a real good close look at verse number two. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Want to stop right there. Men shall be lovers of their own selves their own selves. Hmm. What is a lover? I have you to know, beloved, that a lover is one involved or engaged in a sensual or sexual or a romantic relationship on the outside of a marriage. We know marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. For our Abba Yah ordained marriage. Yes, we live in a country where marriage has been redefined by man, but what God has ordained shall remain. Hallelujah. A lover is an extra curricular activity partner. One who engages with you in sinful acts and sinful ways on the outside of covenant. Hmm. Know about 3.5 million of you saying to yourself, well, pastor, that don't apply to me because I'm not married. Well, the question I must ask you next is, are you saved? Say, what, what do you mean, pastor? Well, okay, let me make a plan. Are you born again? Hmm. <laughs> Have you opened your heart and allowed Jesus to come in and be Lord and Savior of your life? <laughs> stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. If the question that I pose is returned with the answer yes, then I have you to know that you, my friend, have born again status. What do you mean, apostle? What, what, what do you mean born again status? Well, the word of God says this in Ephesians 5 and uh, 23, as the apostle Paul is teaching us about how men ought to love their wives and how it correlates with how Christ loved the church. If you're born again, guess what you are? You are the church. Oh, pastor, well, I thought I went to church. I thought I thought I go to church on Sunday. No, 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 no. We hear the God core kingdom assembly. We, with God's kingdom outreach revival explosion. We don't go to church. We grow the church. Come on, Pastor. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that we are the church. We are the called out ones. We are the ecclesia. We are the assembly. We are the gathered ones. Many of you have been going to church too long. It's time out for going to church. It's time to become the church so you can grow the church. I want to talk to you and share something with you inspired by the Holy Spirit that the Apostle Paul taught us about Christ loving the church and how husbands ought to love their wives and how wives ought to be in submission to their husbands. Watch this. This is Ephesians 5 and 22 
The apostle says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord, your own husbands. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Oh, who's the head of the church? I thought the Pope was the head of the church. I thought the bishop, I thought the apostle, I thought the, the prophet, I thought of the superintendent, I thought the elder, I thought the pastor, I thought the evangelist, I thought the, 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 the state revivalist was over the church. I thought the prelate was over the church. Uh, the Bible says that Christ is the head of the church. Hallelujah. So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Hallelujah. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. I tell you, Christ is the head of the church. The Bible says, and he is the savior of the body. We go down to verse 27 and the Bible says this, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. I want you to know something. We're in a real, real turbulent time. And folk don't understand that being a love of yourself is not what it's all about. We need to love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. We ought to trust God. We ought to believe God. The only plan we have in this hour is plan B. Plan believe. For with man things are impossible, but with God all things are possible. I want you to say this to yourself. A careless society. Careless society. Have you to know that the word lover can be carried very far? A lover can also be uh, one that is overconfident, affectionate, and a lover can be one who is excited about oneself. A lover can be one who has dependency upon oneself. You got to be careful being independent. All oh, you independent ladies, uh, snapping your fingers like Beyonce and moving your neck. Uh, let me tell you something. It's all right for you to be in a position to handle your business, but without God, you have no business. It is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that allows us to have what we need, for he supplies all of our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. All oh, you brothers, yeah, you might have a nice paycheck at the end of the week, Maybe on a salary might have a position, but I want to remind you that it is the Lord by God who giveth us the power to get wealth. Tell you we're living in a careless society. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because men are lovers of themselves. Ah, they love themselves. They depend on themselves. You know, nowadays folk ain't worth a dime. You can't depend on too many folk. So you get to a place where you say, I'm going to stop depending on folk and I'm going to depend on me. If I don't make it happen, it ain't going to happen. But I come to tell you today that without God, nothing can happen. You need the power of God to lead you and to guide you. Am I talking right? A careless society is what we're living in. And as we see the Bible says here in the Ephesians, oh, that, uh, uh, that, 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 that without God, <laughs> oh, we don't have anything according to the word of God as we look and as we see here uh, what he's saying through the Holy Scriptures that, that Christ is the head of the church. So how can you be the boss when Christ is in charge? He's the only boss. Even if you work a job, you ain't got no boss. You got a supervisor. You have a manager, but only Christ is the boss because he's the only one who paid the price for your soul, for my soul. The Bible lets us know, hallelujah, that it is Christ who laid down his life for the sins of the world. What man of love 
love is that that's real love, unconditional love. I tell you, we're living in a careless society. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Sweat is running down my brow. Hallelujah. The temperature is hot, but there's a place hotter than this. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. But I'm so glad I don't have to go to that place. Hallelujah. Because I'm born again. I'm blood born. I'm blood bought, I'm blood washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're living in a careless society. And as we look at the scripture and we see what the Lord is saying to us, we understand that uh, there's people who would trust their own judgment more than God. The Bible says that men, uh, they're lovers of their own selves and, 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 they, and, and they care and their concern, hallelujah, uh, makes them top priority over God. My goodness. Oh, what is the world coming to? I tell you, the world is coming uh, to an end. Uh, there are people who are deceived and being deceived, but we see here in 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. They're, they'll be their own confidant. They'll, they'll become their own counsel. Uh, they become their own fans. A lover is also a fan. And there's a whole lot of you on social media. You're your own biggest fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you are the superstar. And you are your own biggest fan. But I hear the Lord saying that I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and I am a jealous God, and I won't have no other God before me. God is saying, I know you, you're a lover of yourself, but God is saying, I, I can't, I, I can't, I, I, I won't, I, I refuse to share my glory with another. I am the Lord thy God. When you're going through, when, when God came through, when God healed your body, when he brought your family member out, when he brought your family out, when you had no food, when you had no place to stay, God made a way. Was it your own love? It wasn't your own fanfare, but it was the power of God who made a way for you. I'm talking about a careless society. You have to be careful nowadays because folk are so much into themselves. They talk God with their mouth, but God ain't in their heart. I hear the word of the Lord saying that this generation, they worship me and they praise me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. All their feet are rushing to the mischief and the perversion, but the mouth is crying holy. But you can't be holy today, hallelujah, and tomorrow you forgot what that means. All the way you forget is because you never knew. Hallelujah. And that's what's going to happen when you stand before the Father. Uh, but Yah is going to say, state your case. And you're going to say, well, I, I did this. I, I prophesied in your name. I did these events. And I, I did this and I did that. All in your name. going to say, depart from me, you works of iniquity. I never knew you. <laughs> yes, we hear the doors of life open and close. Hallelujah. There's a door that's opening right now. You hear the door opening? There's a door that's opening right now. Hallelujah. It's the door of knowledge. I want you to obtain this knowledge. Embrace this knowledge. You hear the door. That same door that's opening is soon going to close. Soon going to lock. Soon going to be closed shut. There's going to be no more time. There's going to be no more, no more room in the end. Because it will be the end. But the Bible says this. It goes on and tells us that ah, not only uh, men are lovers of themselves, but in verse 4 we see that they're trady, they're heady, they're high-minded. They're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. I'm going to leave you with this. There's so many pleasures in this world. So many things people love. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye. People want, it, want this, they want that. They always want what they see. But let me tell you something. There are benefits in living for God. He is the Lord our God. In Psalm 103 and 3, he says, I am the God who forgives all of your iniquities and who healeth all your diseases. Folk are worrying about the virus. The greatest virus is sin. And you need to understand right here and right now. If you're going to get a jab, get a jab of the word of God. Get a jab of sanctification. Get a jab of holiness. Get the real jab. The J-A-B, the Jesus. The anointing. And the blessing. Get the real tab. If you're going to get a shot, make it a short shot. 
Your short shot is Jesus. Ah, it ain't about what insurance company you got. It's about what assurance your soul got. I tell you, give your life to Jesus the Christ. Get saved and do it now. Romans 10 and 9 will show you how. I'm telling you, this is a careless society. Folk don't care about you. Family members and so-called friends, community, people have their nose up in the air. They think they're better than everybody else because they're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. But I'm telling you something, God's way is the best way. Do things Yah's way, not y'all's way. And I'm telling you, in this careless society, there's going to be a whole lot of crying, a whole lot of gnashing of teeth. In this whole, life, there is no do-over. There's going to be a whole lot of folk who are going to wish they could go back and do things over. But in this life, my friend, there will be no more do-overs. Uh, it's not a game. It's reality. And I want you to know that as a child of God, as a, as a man of God, as a shepherd overseeing under the leadership of Christ himself, I want you to understand that the difference between a saint and an ain't is the S. Because you've got to be saved. And just like the Messiah, just like Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. The same applies to you and I, my friend. You must be born again. This is a careless society. I'm telling you, men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They're lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. You know what that is, beloved? That's suicide, baby. That's suicide. Whenever you put the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to the side, that's suicide. In this careless society, focus on Christ. Give him your life. Subscribe, repost, share, and stay connected to stay informed. Let your family and friends know your kingdom connected with an end time soul saving kingdom power movement and it's called God Core, God's Kingdom Outreach Revival. Explosion. I am your cyber shepherd, your cyber pastor, your cyber apostle and friend. Apostle. I am Apostle BBJ, your cyber shepherd, your cyber apostle, and your cyber friend. I love you in Jesus mighty name. And I strongly urge you and encourage you and admonish you to surrender all to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the way, the only way, the truth, and the life. I love you in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom. Favor. Ain't nothing like favor. That is all I see. That's all I see, yo. Real talk. God has been real good to me. I'm walking in divine. It is what it is. Yeah, when I wake up in the AM, I say to God, thank you for another opportunity to change your heart. Because of the most high, you're a blessed man. Power and favor is a marriage. I'm the best man. The love of Christ is forever great when I found it. The earth is the Lord's man has devoured it. Yeah. I endorse Christ as Lord over all things. Some think falling is a calling. Y'all small change. I'm not ashamed to say Christ my savior. Reason I'm so safe to fly God's favor. Now I'm giving it to God. But I'm sowing into the realm, the dimension that person is. If they ain't a millionaire uh, dimension, then that's what I'm sowing into. Because see, we only think about money, natural. But God thinks about the supernatural. Money in the earth realm, it's nothing but power. It's currency. It's energy. You need that power. Then what the Bible said, I give you power to get wealth. So my covenant could be established. We have a covenant with God. And it's a blood sworn covenant. He can't break it even if he wants it. He wants your situation better. So you can be a testimony to other people. So other people will know the Lord will bring you out of your affliction and what you're going through. And these are they which are sown on good ground. This ministry is good ground. Despite the warfare, despite the things.
things you have suffered, despite the torment, the betrayal, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit. Psalm 34, 60 fold, and 100 fold. Spiritual multiplication. Amen. You what? Hit the jackpot. There you go. She got it. My joy, I think she's got it. God gave Jacob a dream. You know, Jacob worked under his uncle Laban and he took advantage of him, changed his wages 10 times. This sounds like the jobs today. They want to they want to um, downgrade you. They don't want to they want to overwork you and they want to cut your pay, make you work less. Amen. All right. So so now it's so bad these days that the job market now is no longer 40 40. Work for an hour, work for 40 years. That's changed. This is the new norm. But seeing the God divine economy. He'll make a way out of no way and do the impossible. He made rivers in the desert for us. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.